the largest one is what are my lung cancer risks from this? And that's a very difficult question to answer because lung cancer is is a multifactorial cancer based on your smoking history, your radon exposures, and genetic predisposition to cancer in general. So we, we spend a lot of time talking to residents in Kansas and nationally you know, about just the flat out health concerns. And this is a long term exposure risk, you know, just like smoking is a long term lung cancer risk. Your radon exposure is not a one day. It's not a one month issue. It's it's across that lifespan. So the, the sooner we identify a problem and control the exposures, the better you are. From health and safety information regarding the potential danger of radon gas in Kansas homes to legal documents, hypertension awareness and prevention management, mental health, stretching food dollars, and positive parenting, the K-State Research and Extension Winter 2023 Living Well Wednesday webinar series provides an opportunity to learn more about the things that can make our lives better. On today's Sound Living, an overview of the Living Well Wednesday webinars for January, February, and March. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. K-State Research and Extension Family and Consumer Science Specialist for the Northeast Region, Sherilyn Jackson, and K-State Radon Programs Coordinator, Brian Hansen, offer an overview of the Winter 2023 Living Well Wednesday webinar series, including Brian's webinar, a brief intro to radon gas in Kansas residences on January 11th. Sherilyn just concluded a fall series of the Living Well Wednesday series, and a number of topics covered there, and now you're getting ready for the winter series. That's right, Jeff. And I just want to mention, too, that recordings of all of our webinars from when we started a year ago are on our website. Just search Living Well Wednesday, K-State Research and Extension, and it should come up for you. And you're covering really a variety of family and consumer science areas. We cover topics that cover the whole area of family consumer sciences work. So when we look at the Living Well Wednesday series, we think about health, but in a very broad context. And so it's focusing on the physical and mental, financial, and relationship health. So our topics are guided by that. And really the first one coming up is going to deal with a topic that a lot of people have questions about but don't necessarily know where to find the answers, and that is radon. And Brian Hansen, you have all the information they could want in terms of radon protection. Well, we try. For Kansas, we recommend visiting the state radon website, which is kansasradonprogram.org. We have a lot of information there, as well as some specific information on Kansas Radon Action Month, which is every January and was by Governor Kelly's proclamation, once again, a state-recognized activity going into 2023. From a health standpoint, this is something that is difficult because it's so hard to detect. Radon is one of those challenging things where unless we test for it, do a specific air test for the radon, we don't know what those exposures look like. With the concern being that our residential radon exposure particularly does increase lifetime lung cancer risk. It is the leading cause of lung cancer risk for non-smokers. One of the things I hear a lot of people talk about is, well, I have a newer home, so this shouldn't be an issue, but this can happen in any home. It can be an issue in any house with any foundation type. There's a kind of a myth out there that this is a basement only issue, but it's really more about the ground contact level of the home, you know, as that's the point of entry for the radon into the indoor environment. And this is a gas, right? This is a naturally occurring radioactive soil gas. There's no blame here. The builder didn't put it into the house. It's just an artifact and a trade-off for living in a closed box climate control environment like we do. And does it matter across the state? This is something that is prevalent across the state or could be? The original EPA estimate was that one in four houses in the state of Kansas would be elevated at or above the EPA's action level of four picocuries of radon per liter of air. In reality, our our data indicates it's probably closer to one in three houses statewide. So this is a statewide issue. So what should we be doing then? How do we test for this? Many of the state extension offices at the county level have uh, low-cost radon test kits From a real estate perspective, if you're purchasing, you should always include a professional radon test as part of your due diligence on any house you're looking to buy. And if you are living in a home and have never done this test, is this something that you should do? Absolutely. There are, unfortunately, a lot of houses with high levels of radon. 
And we simply don't recognize that until we take the effort to do the radon test and determine if some action to reduce those exposures is warranted. And this is something that you should retest for as well. So if you test a house and it comes up elevated and we take remediation activities, you should be retesting every two years to make sure the remediation is continuing to do its job. And if you initially test low, you should retest about once every five years or after a major renovation of the structure. And the remediation, what does that involve? Generally requires the installation of a permanent mechanical system called an active soil depressurization system. This is putting a direct vacuum on the soil, pulling the radon continuously from beneath the foundation, pushing it to the outdoor air, which is where it's trying to get to anyway, and the house is literally just getting in the way. And is this something that is affordable? Is this going to set you back a lot? What what are we looking at here? Uh, The testing, absolutely not. Again, most of the extension offices have the kits available for DIY for $10 or so. In terms of the remediation, it is a $1,800 to $2,000 national average cost. For Kansas, depending on where you are in the state, it's probably closer to about a $1,500 fix. And really something you would have to do for your health, but also if you want to sell your home, I'm assuming you'd have to do this as well. It's definitely recommended. It's, it's not a requirement, but the state of Kansas strongly urges all houses being purchased include a radon test and, if warranted, radon reduction. Sherilyn, you were mentioning that a lot of extension agents get questions about this. So this is a topic that really makes a lot of sense, not only for the extension agents, but for those watching the webinars. Exactly. It's something that we just feel it's important to create the awareness of, and the test kits are very affordable. At least you need to know if you have a risk factor, and then it can be your decision to do something about it or not. Yeah, and we've both been in our homes for more than 20 years, and we're both sitting here thinking, it's time (laughs) to get that test. So something we need to do as well. I tested 20 years ago, and we bought our house, but now I need to make sure I do that on a regular basis just to make sure nothing's changed. What are maybe some of the common questions you get from people who have concerns, Brian? Really, the, the largest one is, what are my you know, my lung cancer risks from this. And that's a very difficult question to answer because lung cancer is is a multifactorial cancer based on your smoking history, your radon exposures, and genetic predisposition to cancer in general. So we, we spend a lot of time talking to residents in Kansas and nationally, you know, about just the flat out health concerns. And long term exposure is a real risk. Correct. And 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 this is a long term exposure risk, you know, just like smoking is a long term lung cancer risk. Your radon exposure is not a one day. It's not a one month issue. It's it's across that lifespan. So the, the sooner we identify a problem and control the exposures, the better you are. That one is coming up on January 11th. And again, like you mentioned, if they can't catch that live, they can also look at the recording. Exactly. And and if you if you know that there's a topic that you want to catch, we encourage you to register. And that way we can also send the recorded link to you just as a reminder. But all of those links will be posted on our website as well. You have a number of other programs lined out for the winter. Let's run through some of those. End of life documents will be another one in January. That's right. Not just end of life, but any kind of documents, particularly as you get older, things that you need to have in place. So legal documents that you need. We have someone from Kansas Legal Services that's going to talk about that issue. And then in February, we're going to focus on hypertension awareness, prevention, and management. We have a new pilot project with K-State Research and Extension that's going to be going on this winter and hopefully become a statewide effort shortly after that to focus on hypertension, just helping people become aware. Again, you can have high blood pressure and not even know it. And then we'll also have a, a mental health topic in February. In March, it's Nutrition Month, National Nutrition Month. So Stretching Your Food Dollar is our first program on March 8. And we'll end the series with a positive parenting focus at the end of March. And so these are every second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 12.15 p.m. We open the webinar at 12, so you can join a little early if you'd like, so you can catch the start of it. And they go until 1 o'clock, finishes up with questions. And that's kind of nice, the question and answer, because then if you do have something, just right away you can get that answer. Exactly. And if not, we have all the people there that you can contact. We post, the, again, the recordings on the website, as well as the resources that are shared in any links and so forth to other information. So so it's all going to be posted on our website too. Also gives people a real understanding of what family consumer sciences means through extension because there are so many areas that are covered just as 
part of being a fax agent, you've got to know, I don't want to say everything about everything, <laughs> but you've got to know something about everything. Yeah, it's, it's all topics that relate to our daily living and just living better, living well. And so, so there's a wide variety of topics that we cover. We try to pick things that are, have a fairly wide appeal but also then give the the scope and the breadth and depth of family consumer sciences work. You did an excellent job of getting ready for the holidays in terms of all of the things that people come in contact with. You talked about, you know, being prepared healthfully. You also talked about really just coping with loss and loneliness. Mm -hmm. A lot of issues that people may want to go back and revisit those. Exactly. And they, while they have kind of a holiday twist to them, those are tips and information that can apply at any time, not just before the holidays. Talk a little bit about the stretching your food dollar, because I'm thinking that that is something that is on everybody's mind right now. That's right. And really, the the food dollar is something that we, we have to have food. It's an essential part of our life. And so we know that, that that's something we can't eliminate, but we can also make better choices. It's going to focus on, on making, you know, looking at lower cost, healthy options on some food safety and reducing food waste. And those are all things that impact our food dollars. So all kinds of points there. Yeah. The food waste, I think, is something that Extension has really kind of tried to bring to the forefront because you're really throwing your dollars out with the food. Exactly. And so it involves some planning and some preparation. We're so used to just doing things at the spur of the moment, but it's kind of a focus on how can you plan ahead, maximize what you, you know, what you have to spend and get the healthiest and most affordable food for your family. That's the real key, isn't it, is making sure that those dollars are going for nutritional food. Right. And a lot of times it's just looking at what your family's needs and their, you know, what do they like and then how to make that work within your family budget. And really finding a way to use those meals as leftovers or even cooking in smaller portions is another option too. Right. And again, just that whole food safety area is something that's important to know. How long can it be in your refrigerator? Do you, when do you freeze it? How do you how do you manage all of that? And so, so it'll be a, a lot of topics covered there in, in that session. Also, all of these are led by extension agents from all across the state. So a nice way to kind of get familiar with people that maybe you've seen an article in the mm-hmm. newspaper they've written, you've heard them on the radio, a chance to actually see them and interact with them too. We, what we like to do with these programs is pair up an extension specialist with an agent and do a team presentation. Also, even though it might not be the agent that is in your local office, you also have your local office to contact. And that's one of the great benefits of K-State Research and Extension. There's a, a K-State representative and you're, you're linked to the university in every county across the state. It's just a fabulous resource. And as you mentioned, all of the publications and all of the links that are there so you can find all of the information that you need about all of those various topics. Again, how can people find out more about this series? Just go to our website, Living Well Wednesday, and just do a search, Living Well Wednesday, K-State Research and Extension, or Living Well Wednesday, Kansas. It'll come up for you. And then it lists all of the registration, link to registration at the top of the page, and then all of our previous webinars and also all of the topics that are on deck for this winter series will be listed as well. I like the fact that they give me notifications by email that a week from today, yes. you're going to have the Living Well Wednesday, <laughs> and then it tells me the day ahead. So, yes, those uh, are nice prompts to have. Yeah, it's nice to get those on the calendar for sure. And Brian, if people need more information about radon awareness, how can they find that? Again, uh, we recommend visiting Kansas Radon Program, Kansas spelled out, dot org, and uh, you can get information there and our phone number for our 800 number for the state. Always feel free to call us. Uh, it's our day job to talk to you directly. That's K-State Research and Extension Family and Consumer Science Specialist for the Northeast Region, Sherilyn Jackson, and K-State Radon Programs Coordinator, Brian Hansen, with information on the Living Well Wednesday webinar series, which starts up again January 11th with Brian's presentation on radon gas. All of the webinars are recorded, so if you miss a live webinar, you can watch the recording at a later date. Other proposed topics for the winter series include legal documents you need on January 25th, hypertension awareness and prevention management on February 8th, mental health on February 22nd, stretching your food dollars on March 8th, and positive parenting on March 22nd. If you haven't registered for the series, go to ksre.ksu.edu slash fcs and click on the link for Living Well Wednesday webinar series. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University.
I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.